Okay, so unreasonable rent. So you cannot take a rental deduction for unreasonable rents. Ordinarily, the issue of reasonableness arises only if you and the lease, uh, lease are, are related. So if you have relate, notice that if, if you have a market transaction, which we might call it like an arm's length transaction, two people that are have opposing interests in the transaction, usually the person that's renting the property wants to have as low a rent as possible, and the person that that is the renter wants to sell it or rent it you know for as high as possible but if you have related parties then everything goes out the window because if a father is renting to a son or something like that they can start to manipulate or try to manipulate between the payments in order to maximize say tax benefits uh, or something like that so whenever you have a related party transaction you get into these rules of well these types of transactions need to be reasonable whatever that is, which, you know, what it would be for a, for a, a market transaction. It's hard to tell because it's not a market transaction because you have related people in it. But rent paid to a related person is reasonable if it is the same amount you would pay to a stranger for use of the same property. Rent is not unreasonable just because it is figured as a percentage of gross receipts. Related persons include members of your immediate family including siblings either whole or half your spouse ancestors and lineal descendants for a list of the other related persons see section 267 of the internal revenue code rent on your home if you rent your home and use part of it as your place of business uh, you may be able to deduct the rent you pay for that part so if you so this is the home kind of issues you can't when you're talking about your home if you own the home if it's a house you own then you may be able to get the interest deduction which is a big deduction and property taxes on the schedule a and we talked and so that's a whole nother kind of thing those deductions lead people to kind of be confused about the nature of normal deductions for an income tax system because you would think in an income tax system the deductions that would be uh, uh, applicable that you can take are those that you needed in order to generate revenue so if it's a personal deduction, you would think normally they wouldn't be deductible unless there's some other rationale for the law to do that. In this case, though, you're saying if you use the home for your business, then you might either rent the home or own the home. If you own the home, then you have interest that you're paying and you have the property taxes, which you might be able to allocate to your to your business, part of them and part of them to schedule a so then you've got the splitting thing and then if you rent the home then you get you might be able to get a benefit from the part from the rent from part of the rent which could be huge of course so and that would be coming to the business use of the home so you must meet the requirements for business use of the home so it's a whole nother topic in and of itself that you can dive into for the business use of the home but the general idea is that you have to have some part that's going to be laid out for your particular business and possibly you can use a ratio type of analysis of the square foot of your business part versus everything else and you can't just have some non-business place that you do some business in it's got to be you know usually strictly related to business so if you do if you do some work sometimes on your laptop in bed you can't you can't deduct the square footage of your bed ratio rent deduction because presumably you do personal stuff like sleep in there too which isn't business related so so for more so for more information on that you could see business use of your home later okay rent paid in advance and so now we get in some funny business on the rent because note that you might be on an accrual system or you might be on a cash-based system if you're on a cash-based system then normally you take the deduction when the cash is paid but you can start to manipulate a cash-based system by saying, hey, look, if I think I made more money this year than next year, I'm going to make a deal with my landlord that I have that I pay my business rent to for my office building and say, look, I want to pay you all of my rent for the next three years on December 31st so I can deduct it all this year because my income was substantially higher this year for whatever reason, and that will be more beneficial for tax purposes. But the IRS is going to frown upon that kind of activity and try to put some rules in place against that. So generally, rent paid in your business is deductible in the year you paid or accrued. So if you're on accrual basis, that would mean that you pay the rent 
when you actually used the the business office so if you pay rent in advance you can deduct only the amount that applies to your use of the rented property during the tax year so there they're putting their foot down on that one so you can deduct the rest of your payment only over the period to which it applies so for more information uh, you can take a, about rent you can see chapter three of pub 535 you can find it on the irs website irs.gov irs.gov